Well, guys, we have a couple of topics to discuss. We will go over both the short-term and long-term light curves of Tavistar using Bruce Gary's latest G-band measurements, and we will update you on our prediction of where we believe the long-term trend of the light curve will go from here. Let's look at the short-term light variations of Tavistar. From our last update on December 9th, this is the normalized G-band light curve of Tavistar using the 20 data point simple moving average as the nominal flux level. And it showed that we were down approximately 1% from the nominal flux level. So let's move forward in time to the present date by adding Bruce Gary's G-band measurements to this light curve. So this is the normalized light curve on December 12th. Bruce Gary was unfortunately not able to take measurements on December 10th and 11th so who knows how far it fell in those two days. This is December 13th, 14th, 15th, and today's measurement for the 16th. So from our low of approximately 1% below the nominal flux level, we are now sitting at approximately 0.15% below nominal flux. Bruce Gary is calling this latest short-term dimming event the December surprise. So we will adopt that name as well. Now we will look at the long-term light curve of Tavistar and focus in on the last 85 days, which incorporates both the brightening event as well as the current dimming event. So this is the status of the long-term light curve we showed on December 9th, and we are using the 20 data point simple moving average of the G-band measurements to track the long-term flux trend of Tavistar. The light blue circles are Bruce Gary's G-band measurements, and the connected darker blue circles with the red borders form the 20 data point simple moving average curve. As you can see, we were approximately 0.4% below the highest flux level reached by the 20 data point simple moving average. So let's move forward in time to the present date by adding Bruce Gary's G-band measurements to this and also advancing the corresponding 20 data point simple moving average curve. And the best fit curve is shown here. And we are now down approximately 0.6% below the highest flux level reached back on November 16th. As predicted in our last video, dated November 25th, and further refined in our video on December 2nd, we are continuing to complete the right side of the curve as it follows an inverse downwardly sloping trend line that mirrors the left side of the curve. What we show by the green line is a completion of this curve. As you can see, the long-term light curve over this time period has a very symmetrical shape to it. In other words, the left side of the light curve seems to be a mirror image of the right side of the light curve. We noticed this weeks ago using the 20 data point simple moving average, and that is how we got this part of the prediction correct. We believe that there are two potential scenarios as to where we go from here. The purple line shown here is the instantaneous slope of the long-term dimming trend just prior to the brightening event. And the slope of this curve was approximately 0.305% per month. So we have extended that line out in time. So the first of two possible scenarios is that the brightening was caused by a thin area in the material encasing Tabby Star that is causing the long-term dimming. For us to get the dimming curve that we are seeing using the 20 data point simple moving average, the thin spot in the material must have a similar structure as the curve. So we are showing the thin area as a bell-shaped curve in the material. And as the material rotates slowly over many years, this thin spot eventually aligns with our vantage point and we get the characteristic brightening curve that mirrors the structure of the thin spot. So if this scenario is the correct one, we anticipate that the long-term light curve will follow the purple arrow path and will initially have the same slope as the long-term dimming trend had just before the brightening event occurred. So the second of the two possible scenarios is that something very large in comparison with Tabby Star became visible from our vantage point and the brightening was caused by the reflected light being added to the light from the star. The brightening was temporary because the object is in motion and is moving on and the phases of the reflected light from the object are becoming weaker and weaker. 
And Tabby Star is resorting back to the long-term dimming profile we had been in prior to the brightening event. So the brightening event started on approximately September 14th of this year. That was about three months ago. Since the slope of the long-term dimming curve prior to the brightening was approximately 0.305% per month, we expect that the long-term flux line must drop another 1.23% if it were to catch up all today. But that will take some more time and ultimately it will have to drop even more as time progresses before finally catching up with the two curves converging and overlapping on each other. And this second light curve scenario is shown in the light blue arrow path. This gives you an idea of the trend of the second scenario. So guys, this is us going further out on that same limb and hoping it does not finally bust. But so far we have had good success predicting. Well guys, that's all we have for you. Let's hope that David Lane's weather improves so that we can start updating and catching up with the V-band light curve. So take care and we will see you in our next video update.